This video is an introduction for a client to his proposal. So we've done some lucid chart diagrams and some and two comparable quotes using a level three system with Sonos, Ring, Ecobee, etc. compared to a control four system. And the differences in price are nominal. So this is the initial meeting to walk the client through the proposal and then send it to them via email um, using a Dropbox link. Design. Okay, so this document um, again, I, I PDF'd it, so you'll have it. So that's what this is, and you see at the bottom here are my pages. Scope of work, this is a lot of text, but it's basically in detail what you're gonna get by system. And I'm gonna illustrate it for you by just going through. So I've got the floor plan, the photos visible. Let's talk about audio. So in the Control 4 version, they have a piece of a hardware called the Triad Amplifier. So these are $920 each, and what they are is a zone player so that you can play music in certain rooms. So Dave and I have gone through this and what we're, what we're recommending is either Sonos or Control 4 and there are other solutions on the market, not less expensive. So that's, you know, the, the Triad one can handle a single zone. So four speakers is the max that you can put on these as, a, as an area to, to power. But basically the concept is you, you say, I wanna listen to music in the kitchen. That hardware you connect to with your smartphone and you play music through it, okay? And then the sources of music we can talk about separately, but it can be whatever's on TV, it can be you know Spotify, okay? So you'll have technically three because the second floor, if I go to the second floor, there's a zone for your, for your bedroom, okay? Yeah. That stuff is all wired down to the rack in the basement, and we would put those pieces of equipment in the basement. There is the size of an old VCR kind of thing, like a little smaller actually than an old VCR. Now, if I show, let me hide the audio and show the TV in the family room. So in the family room, um, the idea is to mount your, your TV and your soundbar below it. So do you know if your soundbar can be mounted? Now, we, I didn't get, I don't remember the model. It is mounted right now. Okay, perfect. So is it mounted to the wall or mounted to the TV? To the wall. To the wall? Okay. So we... We actually have a bracket that we can actually attach it to the television bracket as well. So it kind of suspends it underneath if that's preferred because your, your wall, I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to necessarily put more holes in that, in that uh, material because no. it's kind of permanent. So that's something to think about. Now, if you, know, if you say, you know, Jeff, there are other solutions. There are. They just cost more. But what I would do is the, ceil the ceiling speakers, unfortunately, are not in a good spot. Because when you want to integrate something with TV, it shouldn't be above you. It should be in front of you somewhere, either a sound bar or what you could do is we could put little speakers on here, like little bookshelf speakers and hide that triad one amplifier in these cabinets. I know we can get wires across here, no problem based on how it's built. So if you and your wife want to talk about that, that's another option instead of a sound bar. But I've assumed for now in the quote that we're just going to mount your sound bar below your TV but I would recommend attaching it using an adapter bracket that mounts it uh, along with the TV bracket. So it just, yeah, that sounds yeah reasonable. Yeah. yeah it'll, okay. it'll just, it'll future proof your solution that you don't have to patch any holes. And I don't think that would yeah. be repairable anyway. Yeah. It's a hard one to patch cause it's sort of like a, it, yeah. anyways. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. That, but that would give you a very good quality sound for watching TV and it would be another zone of music. Now I know the kitchen and the and the family room are really close together, but the orientation of the speakers should be separated from an amplifier standpoint. And to use it with your sources of your television, it needs to go in that cabinet, whereas the in-ceiling speakers are wide, wired down to the basement. So there's a physical aspect of it that is limiting as well. Okay. Um, oh, so related to the TV is then how do you control the equipment if it's hiding inside a cabinet? This is where we need a universal remote. So we need a remote that talks through doors and can talk to your TV and all that. So the control for, uh, they call it a processor. It's basically a little computer. Again, it's probably, you know, not much bigger than a couple iPhones. It's pretty small. And it is going to sit on your computer network in the whole house and talk to all of your smart home devices. So it is not an insignificant amount of money. That's usually where the price starts to go up compared to these other platforms. It's about a $1,500, $1,800 with labor uh, processor, but it's a whole home controller. So once you have that, then you can add any element to the house. So you can add lighting, you can do motorized shades, 
and it ties it all together through a single app. This remote is a Wi-Fi based remote. Again, it's actually optional because you can use your phone to fully control the TV, the sound, everything uh, on your uh, control four system. But the remote is recommended for people that don't want to have to pull out their phone or their phone isn't charged. And it's uh, the same user experience. I pulled up, um, there's a link on my website. If you just go to our website and you search in the top bar, the Neo, N-E-E-O, this little video actually walks you through a, a beautiful little kind of visual of what that remote experience is like. Okay. So, so feel free to do that. Um, but it's a great little, a little, great little system. Okay, so now, does that make sense? That's audio video? Yeah. Yeah. So now let's talk about alarm, doorbell, locks, and cameras. So I call that security, alarm and security. So with a control force system, I, I'm actually gonna recommend, because of the way your stone is built out and it's, it's rugged, I wouldn't put a, like a, a, a big doorbell on there with a camera built into it. Um, the ring, the ring camera is slim enough and it would work, but it's redundant if you're going to put a camera where there's a wire up in your soffit. So I was actually thinking you would just do now control four has a door station. It's $1,600. It's not inexpensive. This doorbell is $200 or roughly around there and it's backlit. It's nice. The cool thing is with control four, if you ring the doorbell, I can mute your speakers if you're playing music. Even if you're not playing music, I can do the ring over the speakers. So you can choose and program which zones listen to the doorbell chime. You can even have it come on very softly in the master bedroom if you want. But otherwise, you know, living room, dining room, kitchen would play a ding dong when somebody rings the doorbell. Okay. The cameras come as a kit and they come with a piece of equipment that goes in the rack in the basement and that these cameras record down to that piece of equipment. So they're not always streaming up to the cloud. And you'll see the other solution I've quoted is Ring. And Ring is, is you pay a subscription, I think it's $120 a year, and that gives you 30 days of recording. And that is part of your package. There's nothing in your house that you're recording on. It's all being output to the cloud. So that's one of the disadvantages it's an advantage and disadvantage depending on who you talk to, but from a security standpoint, it's not as secure. Whereas this is the most secure way. There's no way to access it unless you hack into your home network and then know the password to get into the camera system. So it's got double level of security versus a, a ring. They just need to know your username and password. That's your user account to log into your system. And now they have access and you have no idea if they have access to your cameras or not. Okay. You change your Wi-Fi password at home, Everything is behind that. The quick set lock, I put this in for the control four system because it's a nice feature. As your kids go older, they may come home by themselves. This way they would come in through the garage door, they would unlock the door, you would get a notification. And based on them having individual codes, you would know who it is. You could also, mm -hmm. you could also hand that out for people doing deliveries. You could actually tie in your garage door. I haven't quoted the garage door. Uh, as part of our control system right now, but I know it's a lift master and I know we can do it. It's just, there's some, you know, details we should talk about whether you want to do it or not. It would cost a few hundred dollars to add that. Um, but the, the, the locks are, there's so many on the market right now. There's a few of them that work with control four. So there's lots of choices in terms of style. I picked this one uh, because I've used it before. I have it on my garage, believe it or not. And it's the uh, same color as your existing hardware. That's why I was asking for pictures of your front door. Your front door can't be uh, done unless you- Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I'm okay with that. I didn't think yeah. you'd want to do anyway. But so, so I've quoted two or four of these cameras, two on these, one on the, and again, you don't need to do all four. This is where your feedback after you review the quote, you can say, Jeff, is there a way to cut back on the pricing? And yes, you can for sure. You could do one camera. Um, basically they're roughly around $300 each. All right. And then I added a thermostat. So we would replace that Emerson thermostat. It's a, it's a regular thermostat. There's no integration currently available for that one. So we would replace this. This is about a $400 piece of hardware. Um, this comes from a company called April air, but it's branded control four. So again, this is an example where control four has licensed a third party manufacturer to make a product that is compatible with their systems. Um, it all control four can also work with Google nest and it works with Ecobee and with Honeywell. 
So we don't have to use control four, but it is actually the best performing uh, thermostat that we've found. And it's kind of the same style. It's white, it kind of blends in a little bit. Uh, and finally, to make all this stuff work is network access points. So these little devices can mount to ceilings and walls. They're basically the size of a dinner plate, maybe a little smaller, maybe between a dessert plate and a dinner plate, and about an inch thick. They are being powered by a switch that goes into your rack, and they're, so there's, they're just using that network cabling. That's why we kind of had you walk around and show us all the network cables. This is the one that we're hoping is that I have a feeling based on where it's located, it's actually wired for a doorbell chime, but it could be a Cat6. So if it's a Cat5 or Cat6, we can use it for the network. Or if you use an old style doorbell, you can put a doorbell chime there. But that's why I think it's doorbell chime, because it's the only one that was mounted up high. And that's typically what we do as well. We'll, we'll usually put that near the front foyer, but it's actually not a bad spot to put it um, closer to the kitchen, because then you can kind of hear it going up and down the stairs too. Yeah. All right, so that's your main floor. Um, the other floors, what I did is I didn't hide everything. I kind of put it all together. So this is your basement. Um, we did some calculations. That rack that they put in there is too small for either solution um, in terms of space in there. So we actually quoted you an extra one that would just go below it. If you want to consolidate it and take that one out and just have one rack, we can do that. But we need about double that size. Not too big, right. but about double that size. And we could even okay. hide that alarm can and um, I've quoted uh, extending the power from the lower baseboard into the rack so nothing's dangling there and stuff and getting in the way um, so we can clean that up <clears throat> okay okay um, again I've quoted an access point so we've got three of these in the budget we're thinking of putting one on the ceiling in here again kind of just above this rack one on the sec on the main floor and one on the second floor if the one on the main floor can't go in that hallway, what we're going to do is we're gonna, probably going to put it into the uh, main floor cabinet, probably on one, you know, inside one of these cabinets. So it does your Wi-Fi back there. You've got those cables in into this uh, cabinet. That's the stuff that you found behind your TV there. Okay, so that's the base. The basement's pretty straightforward. Um, we're not recommending using these speakers in the rec room until you think whether you want to do a surround sound or not. So we've quoted you a 75 inch TV, a 7,000 series from Samsung. They're not expensive. I think they're around, I'll, I'll double check the price. I think they're around 2,000 bucks, not, not very expensive. So 85 is their next model up and it's not that much more. But so you could, you could tell us what you think makes sense in that room, but we've basically quoted to mount the TV, run a couple cables down below it. So if you had a little kind of media cabinet or piece of furniture, then you could put your uh, sources in there, whether you have you know, uh, an Apple TV or, or a bell box, we can figure that out. But everything, you can pretty much run everything off the TV now. Netflix is built into it. Everything comes part of Samsung's uh, smart hub, they call it. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, I also, on this diagram in the basement, I, I put some notes on here based on what we talked about. So Bell, or in your case, Bell would attach to the back of the house, um, you know, up high, and then they would bring a wire down the fiber optic, run it across the house to the front, and then come in through the outside wall. I, I would highly recommend you have us there when that happens so that they don't cut any corners. We've had too many scenarios where they come into the house, they look and they see the family room TVs over here, so they come into this corner because it's shorter and they pop a uh, cable into your family room cabinets. You don't want that because you want that router to be in the basement. You don't want that, okay. don't want yep. that to be your Wi-Fi because then you're limited. The other thing, if you have Bell or Rogers as your home network, if you ever want to switch or upgrade the hardware, every device in the entire house has to be reconfigured and redone. So with our solution, with Control 4 especially, once we set up the network, it stays as is. You could swap your modem from Bell or Rogers every month. It's literally a plug and unplug. It has no say in how your network is run. And that's one of the advantages of us kind of engineering it so it's done properly. They are okay. just a service provider plugging into your home. It's just like, you know, doing a network for the hospital. You've got hundreds of access points throughout uh, the hospital that, you know, distributes network and Wi-Fi. Same concept on a much smaller scale in a residential environment, but exact same architecture, exact same approach to networking. So it gives you that safety net of not having to you know, worry about Bell and Rogers. That's why we always say, if you ever have a problem, you call us first 
we'll, we'll tell you whether you need to call Rogers or Bell. We'll be able to tell that right, right away. Okay. Um, so the, in your quote, you'll see these pieces of hardware from Arachnus. Arachnus is the networking equipment. And there's another one called Wattbox. And Wattbox is a smart power bar. Again, uh, a small investment so that we can reboot a device. Specifically, the one that's gonna go in your rack is gonna allow us to reboot the bell motor. Because every once in a while, it needs a, a, a quick reboot. And then we don't have to unplug anything. We literally click a button on our, our management platform is called Oversee. That's this little logo here. You'll see it on our trucks. And it's a great technology that's been around for about, mm, I'd say eight years. So we've invested in it and it basically allows us to do that 95% service level. Whereas it used to be about 50 to 50, we'd have to come on site for half the, half right. the issues. This and out allows us by just rebooting the bell modem. Like that's number one. Number two is especially with Rogers is rebooting the Rogers TV boxes because they always lock up. So we, everywhere we put a, a bell box or a Rogers box, we put one of these little outlets and have to reboot them every once in a while. So it's a good little uh, little tip to make sure that those things aren't cut out of the project. Um, I put a picture of the backyard. There's really not much in here to do other than if you want to plan for, you know, using your backyard, putting some music back there, we could actually run some speaker wire down the alleyway and, you know, bury it along the fence, that kind of thing. So in the future, if you ever want to do that, let us know. And that's not hard to do at all. Okay. Um, but you do have two cameras at the back corner or at least wires for the cameras. Okay. Yeah. So that's the version for control four. Uh, I'm not going to go in detail of the IOT version, but if you okay. can, you'll, you'll, you'll get both versions in a PDF format. You can compare it. You can see here, I've got Sonos amps instead. I've got ring cameras instead of the bullet, like the dome ones. I've got an yeah. Ecobee thermostat instead of the control four thermostat. I've got a Logitech remote instead of the control four uh, remote. And I got a ring uh, video doorbell instead of the regular doorbell. And back in your folder here, these two quotes. So let me walk you through. I'll walk you through the, the non-control four one first. So you see the price of that one. Okay. So this is, um, so I say design document, take a look at the actual document that I just walked you through for the scope. And then what you'll see is by location. So the head end is the basement rack area. I've got yeah. in here a new a new 12 U. So U sizes in the rack space is, is height. And the one that you have in there is probably a six or an eight. So we need about, you know, we need at least 12. So I've this is the smallest ones that we sell. And I've got some accessories in there. So it says accessories included like shelves, there's a fan, uh, there's some uh, there's some pieces of hardware that are gonna enable us to actually terminate all the cables that are loose in there. So there's more than just the physical case um, that's included, but I don't show all those details. You can see there are 640 bucks or 641, I guess. This next section is the, the network. I've put it all into one location. So the three access points are all together here. And then this little box, yeah. so th this guy's 399. These guys are $500 each. Um, the router I believe is $500 and this switch is $500 ish. Okay. So that makes up your $2,700 of networking. Whether you do control four or this solution, it's the same network. So I, I say, you know, don't, don't try to cheap out on the network. It's not something that's going to pay off. You could try something like Google Wi-Fi, but you're still with Google Wi-Fi with setup and network, and it's going to be ugly plug-in modules that are just repeating your Wi-Fi signal. You're still going to spend about a thousand dollars and it's not as secure, not as robust and all those kind of, uh, element. Okay. Alarm. Uh, I won't go into too much detail here, but I have quoted to replace the parts that are needed. And this one yeah. I, I've quoted you is 1200 bucks. So I thought it was 15, but it's, it's 1200 bucks. Okay. So this location, so everything in the basement so far, in, but you know, minus the access points are actually not in the basement, but this element is $46. Yeah. Okay. The basement rec room, uh, 1700. Yeah. So that TV is 1599. The rest of the price is a uh, cable. Pardon me. That's a great price, isn't it? Like TV prices this year have gone down significantly. You know why Crazy. though? You know why this is? So this is the second year that 8K TVs have been available. So Samsung last year introduced 8K. We sold a few to a few clients last year. You know the picture picture quality is not much better than 4K because there's no content yet. 
So they're, they're really dropping the price of their 4K because I think they want to get through the manufacturing of all those and sell them all off and move everybody into the, the 8K because mm -hmm. they've dropped the price of the 8K now, so it's a little bit more palatable. So we'll, we'll see how they do this year, but, but <laughs> who knows what everybody's doing this year anyway. Um, front, front door, um, uh, again, replacing the, the keypad yeah. and the ring doorbell. Again, these are not expensive items. Uh, in your mudroom, again, you can tell me, say, you know, Jeff, I don't need locks. That's fine. I can just take We probably out. won't do locks for now, or I'm thinking like just, I, I, it wasn't really ever something that I felt strongly about, but I hear what you're saying. I mean, it's an interesting, compelling argument, but for I now, see. I don't think it'll be something we'll do. Yeah. So when you get my quote in PDF, just strike out the ones you don't want to include. It's it. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if something's required, but a, a lock. Yeah. 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 camera those are those are your decisions it's not like you need them right it's just a yeah. Is, yeah, it yeah. Part yeah. Of, is it part of your um lifestyle that it's going to be a benefit uh, to you. so this august lock i don't know if you've ever heard of them but they're again like another amazon ring kind of company an iot device okay. these are all the these are all wirelessly controlled these have batteries in them so you do have to replace them every once in a while uh, the ring cameras, the quality on these are, are really nice. The fit and finish, though, I just warn you, it, it will close exposed wire coming out of the house, plugging into the back. So this little little stand can be used in the house as a wireless camera, but it also is the mount for uh, an exterior camera. So okay. it does look okay. Like our guys take their time, you know, make everything nice and uh, neat. They'll even wrap if we use a white. They come in white or black. If they use a black they'll wrap you know black electrical tape around the wire so it kind of fits yeah. in nicely and make it nice and neat and then they'll cock the uh the location where the wire comes out of the house is that uh, the price for all four yes yes okay. yeah and it's very similar to the other quote the control four one i'll show you it's about the same price uh it's just that those ones are your traditional camera system recording down in the basement this is the ecobee uh thermostat again same price as you would buy it online what i'm doing yeah. What I'm doing is installing and configuring it for you. So it's got an, it's got a couple hundred dollars of labor attached to it. That doesn't include labor. This is just the hardware. The labor is in total at the very bottom of this quote, which we'll get to in a second. Yeah. Uh, the Sonos amps for the main floor, I've got two of them. Again, they're being installed in the basement, but they're dedicated to your living room, dining room, and kitchen. So I've grouped together the living room, dining room as one, and then the other zone is the kitchen. Okay. All right. And I've put one of these for the family room, another little watt box so that in case I need to reboot the TV or reboot the, um, the sorry, not the TV, the, the bell box for your TV or the, or the uh, base station for the remote control. So the Logitech okay. remote uh, would go in here, which is down here. But this little black box at the bottom sits in the cabinet and it's what talk to, it talks to the bell box. Um, I've included this because I don't know what version of Samsung TV you have, but the, the Roku is a very inexpensive, it's $69, but it's got, it's got um, the ability to give me direct, uh, they're called uh, smart apps. It, it puts a Netflix button on this remote or the Control 4 one, much easier to use than a Control 4, but it's a Netflix button instead of having to open up, you know, a Roku or the Samsung smart app it launches it directly uh, from the Roku. So it's a really good user experience. Not a lot of money to spend for a better experience. And this guy is for your master bedroom, again, installed in the basement using your in-ceiling speakers. And then we get into service and support. So we've got two fees. If you don't do the alarm system upgrade and you don't get us to do it, it's you, you get whoever you want to do it. And then we just charge $30 a month here for the ongoing service and maintenance that you can call us after hours and evenings and weekends. Okay. It doesn't include anything coming on site, but it allows us to manage your system, update your network when there's a new security patch and update. Even we have uh, the ability to update the um, Logitech remote. If you need a change or you add a new device, we can actually remotely program that and it downloads it right to the remote. Okay. Okay. So then there, there's your total. Um, so it's 12,000 for the equipment and 6,500 bucks for the labor. We add a project admin fee of 2%. If you decide to pay uh, by e-transfer or, um, or check, uh, that will go away. I'll, uh, I'll let you go through that in more detail when you get it. And then I wanted to show you the Control 4 version, just to compare. 
So again, same kind of structure and concept, same rooms. The head end network is identical, 2,700 bucks. The alarm, yep. uh, identical. So we're, at this point, we're the same. TV is the same in the rec room. Yeah. Front door, uh, same alarm keypad changed over. Different doorbell, so not the ring doorbell, but it's integrated into Control 4. So again, it's a nice little $170 doorbell with a power supply. So that kind of uh, makes it look, it's a, it's a very nice uh, looking doorbell too. It's a company called Spore. The garage unit is the one I was showing you in the presentation. It's a, or the, the lock. So if you don't do that, it's fine. I take it out. Um, and that, again, like when I take this out, it takes out the labor as well. You tell me okay. what sections are important to you. And as you can see the cameras, I think the other one was yeah. nine, nine something. This one's 1100 bucks. This is higher quality. So it's a four megapixel, which is higher resolution than the ring doorbells. And this is a much cleaner, uh, fit and finish. And these can be ordered in black or white as well. Uh, one of the things you, you probably noticed in the other one, we didn't talk about lighting. So in control four, not expensive at all. As you can see, it's $110 for a dimmer. I've included these so that you could actually do an element of automatic lighting programming. And if before you guys go out and buy a whole bunch of dimmers, I notice it's all manual switches. You'll probably want to add dimmers to your house. If you buy a, a Lutron dimmer at Home Depot, it's going to cost you 60 bucks. If you hire somebody to install it, you're probably looking at hundred bucks at least. So these ones are smart uh, dimmers from Control 4 that do lighting. Control 4 also works with Lutron. So if you want to use a different style of dimmer, this one has a slight rocker to it. So when people feel it, they, they can feel the up and the down kind of thing. But these are a great little add-on anywhere you want to automate light. So I've included, uh, I think I included two for your project. I was suggesting doing at least the front door or the garage lights and the front hall light that is above the, the front foyer. So that if you're away, we can have those lights kind of come on automatically during, during uh, times you're, you're away. Great security feature to do automated lighting. And because you have that processor with Control 4 that allows you to add all these other elements to it, lighting is you just need to add the dimmers and have us program them. And that's it. Okay. Uh, control 4 thermostat. The amplifiers, same concept. So the, the, the quotes compare themselves, you know, room by room, system by system very easily so you can see yep. what the cost differences are. Um, same thing in the family room, exact same solution, except now this is the big price difference right here. Your main processor and that Neo remote, the Neo remote is $785. So if we compare it to the other one, here, this is 519 for that remote. And this one is 2184. That's your big price difference. And then the dimmers uh, are, are, are extra, or they're, they're in addition in this quote. These amps are $120 more than the Sonos ones, the triad ones, but they're higher quality too. Um, what I have in here is I have a few other things in the service and support. So I've added this, that our service support is included in here for a year. So after a year, depending on uh, you know, what's important to you, we can actually renew. Um, some clients actually get extra things included, so they'll prepay for service support. Let's say a couple on-site visits. We discount them if you pay them ahead of time. It's not required. It's just typically a service call. A truck roll for us is sending a technician for a one-hour service visit is $250. Um, if you prepay it, you save, the you save the travel charge because you're within, we call it a 10, 15 minute typical drive of our office, we don't charge the extra travel uh, time. But otherwise, if it's, if it's not prepaid, then we charge for it. Okay. All right. Um, and we include uh, a few hours of extra programming to be used anytime within that year. So that's if you say, hey, Jeff, I wanna, I wanna add an extra device and I need somebody to come and re I wanna add a couple more dimmers. If it's you know, two hours, one time, that's you know included in your fee. So I don't charge extra for that, I just know that we always kind of come back and do the odd little extra programming six months after you've lived there because you say, now I know what I want exactly. So it's always useful to do that. So I, you know, I don't like to send a bill for 150 bucks, 250 bucks, and it just saves you ha for having to pay for it. You, you then use it if you've already got it as part of your package. So the total for this one, as you can see, it's not a massive difference, but $3,000 total. And that really comes down to that process in the remote. That's where the big, big difference is. But everything is on one app. There's no, you know, going to six, seven different apps to control all your different systems. 
Okay. So mm -hmm. that's the that's yeah. the uh, complete solution. So I don't know what you yeah, had. I don't know what you had in mind in terms of overall budget, but uh, just so you, like compared to other jobs we do, we do anywhere from five thousand dollar projects up to five hundred thousand dollars. So I consider this a very small project. Um, yeah, but I, I think you know whether you do this or you do something more elaborate, like the big cost. Yeah. The big cost to clients is usually do like they want the whole house automated lighting. That's going to be fifteen thousand dollars. They want motorized. Yeah, no, we weren't. No, I, to be honest, I mean, my my hope, I was hoping to get in somewhere yeah. under 15. That was my, yeah. yeah. so, you know, I mean, yes, it's more, um, but that's, that's what I kind of, I mean, I've never done this before, so I didn't know what to expect, but. Yeah. It, it, uh, and, it's, and it's hard because there isn't anything that you can kind of go to and plug in and say, you know, hardwood floors, I know it's how much, how many square feet is it typically? Yeah, that's right. You no, know, you can kind of calculate it. Our our business is a little complicated that way. And if you get another three quotes, they'll all be different. The scope will all be different. Unless you give them our hardware list and get somebody else to quote it exactly like we quoted it, what they'll typically do is they'll say, oh, okay, fine. I'll do 10% off the labor and they won't even spend any time doing it, right? So um, I, I have no problems with competing quotes. Our level of service is much better than most people. And I would highly recommend if you want to call uh, 10 references, I'm happy to give you references. I, I, you yeah. know, the, the clients that we work with are very happy with our level of work. And um, again, this is not a hard project for us. Our guys can do this quite quickly yeah. and uh, okay. you know, get you up and running and, and set you up. Getting moved in is a very important part of the process. And we, I've been doing this 20 years. So I know what works really, really well and making sure that we're there when Dell's there and getting everything up and running for you guys is, uh, is part of what we do and what we love. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to send you a link to the Dropbox. Then you yeah, can, please do. you can download all those files and look at them in more detail. And then they yeah. can me with some changes. Um, happy to add as much more stuff as you want. <laughs> um, probably not looking to add more Jeff. I'll yeah. be honest. Yeah. I know. I know there's a lot to do when you move in anyway. So the other thing is you could also, so strike stuff out that you don't want, but if you want to yeah. highlight anything that you think, you know, maybe this will be phase two, happy to do that as well. Okay. Um, number one thing to do though, is get the, get the, um, get the network up and running properly. Uh, alarm system. Again, I don't know how your take is on alarm systems. That's something that we can take off the, the quote. No problem. Same with the cameras. You can always do that later. So, it's not right. like we need to do it right now. There is a little bit of element of once we pull out that other rack and get all those cables identified, you know, doing it once is, is a lot easier. So we should. And with the alarm cables. system, you're suggesting we just change it. Yeah. Okay. And then um, cameras, um, like whether we need four or whether we need two or whatever, I mean, we can. I yep. guess decide. You tell me. Yeah, exactly. That, so the, the control four system, the one that's hardwired with those little domes, they come as a kit. So there's a four pack kit. So if you want to okay, just so you do buy the four. Yeah. Whereas the ring are bought individually. So if you do the IOT version, um, then I would just, you know, it's per camera because there's no hardware in the basement other than power. The, the, there's a switch that I've got in the network quote that is enabling power to all these devices. Okay. Um, all right. That sounds good, Jeff. I'll have a look at it. Um, I may need to, you know, I might have some questions. Oh yeah, please do. Yeah. No problem. Just if you want to talk tomorrow or on the weekend, I'm around. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Send it over. Um, I just got to run, but, uh, yeah. Thanks for the, thanks for that. I really appreciate it. No, I appreciate your time. Lovely to talk to you. Okay. All right. Be in touch. Okay. Bye. Okay.